Um, hi, today I want to show you something very cool. It's this um, Dick and Teller or uh, telephone cost counter, which um, dates from I think 50s, 60s. Does it say anything? I don't know. It's an old thing anyway. And it's been lying in a cupboard for uh, for many many years and I wanted to put it to some use so I modified this thing so that it can be used now and um, as you can see here on the side it's a uh, it's a tally tax from the PTT we use it here in the Netherlands in bars and student houses to keep track of your telephone cost and to share your telephone with several different people um, it says here on the label it's uh, 70 volts, 50 hertz. And what else does it say? Sodeco Geneva. Apparently these were made in Switzerland. It's a very decent thing. And uh, I want to show you what I did with it. So what I did is I modified this thing that it doesn't count the ticks from the telephone exchange anymore. But you can use the red button to make uh, to make one count. So you push it, one, and well that's very simple of course. And um, I added a little trick. If you press it for a long time, it'll go up 10 steps, which can be handy. Um, these buttons used to be the reset buttons. It would reset the, uh, the counter mechanism to zero. Uh, and I removed that because I needed the buttons for this purpose. Um, so I'll, I'll show you the schematic. So here we see how a telephone on the right is connected to the telephone exchange on the left. It's two wires, it's a twisted pair, and when the current flows in this direction, it goes through the telephone and back through the other wire. And now I'll show you what they did with the Dick and Go to the next picture. This here is the internal schematic of the Tick and Teller. And what they do is they send current over the two wires in the same direction, both wires from left to right. It doesn't go into the telephone because the current can go nowhere. It goes into the Tick and Teller, and here it is using this uh, current mode, common mode uh, transformer. It goes to the and a, a capacitor and a resistor it goes to the to the solenoid of the uh, actual uh, ticket data and then the current goes to earth and through the earth it goes back into the telephone exchange this is the typical dutch system where they use 50 hertz 70 volt over the on the line and because it's it's um um, the telephone is connected in a symmetric tw way to the A and B wires. You're not supposed to hear anything of of the tick when it's when it's sent to the ticket teller, apart from the uh, sound that the. Here you see the schematic of uh, what I made. So I wanted to um, have a counter that can count presses on the on the red button and um, count ten steps if you hold it hold the button for say a second um, it's connected directly to mains the thing it's 230 volts that comes in here on the left it goes to uh, one of those HL key HLK1 modules that makes 5 volts very very small module that makes 5 volt power supply which goes into a very small microcontroller on 80 tiny 13 um, and it has um, an input that's this side which is connected to the to the button that's already in the in the housing so I don't have to make that and it has an output that goes to this which looks like an optocoupler but it's actually kind of mixed between an optocoupler and um, a triac or maybe it's um, it's a solid state relay in a, in a dip form, which is really quite small and handy. 
So there's a uh, lead on this side and um, photoreactive triac or something on, on the right side. And um, the solenoid itself, as it needs 17.5 volts AC, 50 hertz, it was, would be most um, convenient to feed it directly from mains voltage. So this is the reason why I have this opto thing in there. The mains voltage is switched by the triac. Then there's um, a resistor and a snubber network in here. And this big thing on the right is the actual solenoid. And then it goes back to mains. And all that I put into this box and I made it decently earthed so that I wouldn't shock anyone. And um, I'll show you the insides in a few seconds. So I'll show you how to, uh, what happens when I open it and what I put inside. I've already disconnected the mains plug, so it won't cause any problems for me. Just screw it open. Um, I made um, an earth wire to the, to the aluminium casing to protect that thoroughly. Um, here's what you see inside. Um, this is the uh, the push button mechanism. Um, this is the actual solenoid that does the count. Now this is not the solenoid. The solenoid is is way here in the in the, in the bottom. I don't know if you even can see it. Um, so I'll try to show you. Um, maybe I should zoom in a little bit. Um, focus yep so here you see a little PCB it's this size and uh, here is the uh, um, the microcontroller nothing it's the other way around here is the microcontroller that's the little chip that you can see yeah and here is the um, the, the opto triac the 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 electronic relay so I'll just get the whole assembly out of the case there's uh, four screws here on the back that you unscrew and the whole thing comes out let's just do that uh, one tip always collect your screws and uh, something like this or otherwise they'll roll off the table and you'll never find them again this side we see um, a 0.3 microfarad capacitor that was originally in there that I reused. On the other side was a similar thing that I removed to make place for the circuit. Can we see it? I'm sure we can. Let me try to get a little bit better focus. I've only had this camera for a day, so yep. So the big block you see here is the the high link HLK1, which is the power supply of five volts. Um, the mains come in on this side. These wires here go to the uh, AC side of the high link. Come out on this side. Here's the microcontroller that is connected. With these two wires to the to the switch on this side so I made a few modifications two modifications actually to the switch because if you press it normally it would reset the whole thing it's very difficult um, so I put a, a little piece of plastic in here that prevents the switch from going down all the way so it'll, it'll just toggle the switch but it won't continue all the way down Let's see better this way I think here's this little piece of plastic and I put another piece of plastic in here that keeps
keeps this piece of metal up and you have to keep that up otherwise the, the counter won't um, uh, will reset to zero so these two modifications disabled the reset mechanism and made it suitable for pressing well that's all there is here's the inside of that we're going to put it all back together and hopefully it still works a lead seal go through these holes so that it's, it's impossible to tamper with the thing. Let's just try it out. Well, it still works. Good. 